Welcome back to Inspiring Builds. I'm Dan, and today I'm going to show you how to build a DIY gas fire pit table. I wanted something round to match the new patio and decided to go with a whiskey barrel as well as gas so I could have a fire in three seconds. If you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any of these tutorials. Similar fire pits I saw going between two and $4,000. I built this one for a fraction of the price and would do a full cost breakdown as well as list all of the parts I used in the description below. This is a 30 gallon whiskey barrel. I wanted to get a good table height for drinks and a foot rest. I recommend calling around to your local distilleries as I found this one for only $50 that they typically sell for $200 due to one distillery having too many on hand. I used a couple of scrap 4x4s to place the barrel on. The thought process was it would assist holding the barrel and be easy to rotate when cutting the top off. I identified my cut line to be right above the third hoop. I used painter's tape to tape off the hoop on the barrel to protect it as the cut mark was right above the hoop. A couple of benefits going with a 30 gallon versus a 53 gallon is first the cost is cheaper with the smaller one. And second, the hoops are fastened to the staves. If you decide to go with the 53 gallon, Ensure to fasten the hoops to the staves as they will work their way loose over time. Drill a pilot hole large enough to fit your jigsaw blade into above the hoop along the cut line. I used a battery powered jigsaw, however it wasn't fully charged. This is the reason for busting out two jigsaws as I finish with my electric one. It's always a great idea to have the flexibility of both if you can. Battery powered ones are great taking to job sites as well as not messing with cords, but electric ones can be counted on for reliability as shown here. Have a bit of patience here as you can see the staves on the barrel are a true one inch thick. The fire pit pan had an inside diameter of 19 inches and the barrel was only 18 and 3 quarter inches. I measured and marked off 1 8 inch all the way around so the pan would fit. With a plunge router I used a straight router bit with a 1 inch cutting depth. Don't focus on making this perfect as the pan will cover it. Ensure to wear PPE as you will generate a ton of wood shavings as shown here. To avoid this step, I could have cut down on the barrel a bit further, or another option would have been to select a smaller pan size. I, however, was trying to maximize the pan and burner size due to the size of the patio, as well as wanting to put out more heat. Test fit the pan and it fit nice and snug as planned. I used an air rotary tool with a medium 150 grit to sand down the barrel. This is an optional step. Air tools makes the job more efficient, but you can achieve the same results with other sanders or even by hand. Prior to sanding the rest of the barrel that I will not show as sanding is super boring, go ahead and remove the staples from the barrel. I drilled in eight small holes evenly spaced with a 1 8 inch drill bit around the base and later around the top so loose gas can escape. A table is optional as well, but I wanted something where you could sit your drinks down or use it as a footrest. I repurposed an old 36 inch round table. 
There are several ways to find the center of a circle. I first place the pan on the bottom side of the table and check that the distance from the pan to the edge was the same all the way around and then marked a line around the pan. My favorite way to find the center is to make three marks anywhere on the circle, find the center between each mark, and the intersection of them will be the center. Pick two points on the edge of the circle and draw a straight line. I use a measurement that can easily be divided in half. Here I chose 10 inches and marked the middle at 5 inches. Use your square to draw a 90 degree angle from the center point. You can find the center off of two lines, but the third line will just confirm it. To draw the circle as I needed to cut out a 19 inch diameter circle for the pan to drop in, I drilled two holes in a wooden shim 9.5 inches apart. I screwed in one hole in the center point and used my marker on the other hole to draw the circle. Before cutting out the center, drill a pilot hole large enough your jigsaw will fit in on the inside of the circle. I didn't risk my battery powered jigsaw having a full charge yet and went with my electric jigsaw again. When I test fit the pan, it was slightly too large and this is why you see me using a router to shave off a little bit of material. Let's see if the burner will fit this time. That's what I'm talking about. We're in business and thank you, as it's a hot day. I went with a Jacobine stain going for a darker look and later applied polyurethane. Don't worry about stain getting on the hoops as it can be wiped off very easily. I purchased a propane installation kit that had everything needed. My one complaint is that they sent white tape instead of yellow and I recommend yellow for gas applications. No big deal as the yellow tape is only a couple bucks. This kit had both a female and male adapter to hook up to the pan, which was awesome to make work with any pan. Apply tape and fasten the adapter to the pan. In my case, I used the female to female adapter. Use tape on all connections except flared ones as shown here. This kit also included an air mixer. I strongly suggest one as an air mixer will ensure a much cleaner and more efficient burn. Hook up the first hose to the air mixer and the other end will go to the gas key valve that we will install next on the barrel. Unscrew the plate from the valve stem. I used a 1 and 3 8 inch Forstner bit for the hole and fastened the plate back on the valve stem. Next, hook up the other end of the hose that was installed on the air mixer to the top of the valve stem. Install your second hose on the bottom of the valve stem and the other end will fasten to your propane tank. I added a hose clamp on each hose to fasten it to the barrel. Turn your propane tank on and then drop in the pan and the burner. You're now ready to do a test prior to installing the rocks. Turn the key and use a lighter on the burner and in 3 seconds you have a fire. There is also an option to install an igniter with this pan, however it's super easy to light without one. 
Using the key, make sure to turn off the valve and remove the key after each use. I use black reflective fire glass. The pan called for 20 pounds of fire glass and I went with 25 pounds as I was planning a future project. I'm glad I went with 25 pounds as the pan needed it and could have held 30. This fire pit is super easy to light and I will show you how to adjust the flame. The fire picked up a reflection with the position of my camera. The flame can easily be adjusted with the key valve, turning it to the left for high and back to the right to almost a closed position for low. To turn it off, turn the valve all the way to the right. I purchased a heavy duty cover that was 36 inches around, perfect for the table and is waterproof. Here is the cost breakdown for the project as promised, with the grand total coming in right under $400 for a huge cost savings. After completing the project, I ended up putting the propane tank under a hideaway side table next to the chairs. I really appreciate you watching. If you like this video, I have another one queued up for you in the corner that you'd probably like as well. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like, comment, share, and hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I release new videos.